The Empass Light is known as an omnidirectional, short to medium range, 17 foot telescoping vertical antenna using both ground and sky wave propagation. We know it specifically for this 17 foot SS17 telescoping antenna. Well, it also comes with a 60 foot wire that doubles as your ground radial when you're setting this up in its vertical configuration. I'm going to bookend this vertical antenna with two wire installations, one that you've seen before and one that you probably have never seen used with the Empass Light and the SS17. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, KD4BMG. This video on my perspective of the Empass system and today the Empass Light is sponsored by Chameleon Antenna. Follow the basic diagram and my simple video demo. Take the polymer ring on the far end of the wire, attach it to the ground with the ground stake. Take the floating ring in the middle of the wire and hang it about 20 feet in the air. The balance of the wire goes down to your micro or mini. This inverted V is a short to medium range HF antenna providing NVIS below 10 megahertz. It's bi-directional broadside to the antenna above 10 megahertz. It's omnidirectional below 10 megahertz. I was doing a number of antenna setups and configurations in preparation for this series, so I didn't have time to get an SWR reading or set up my whisper transmitter on that 60 foot inverted V. Don't worry, we'll get some SWR readings and a whisper map or two on that other wire configuration you've never seen before on an SS17. Let's talk about what comes with this Empass Light package. The kit comes with a ground spike, a micro or mini, which you would choose based on the wattage that you want to run. It will come with a coax feed that does have an RFI choke in the end of it, as well as a 60 foot wire that will double as your radio when you're putting this up in the vertical, which I'll show you in just a second. This kit is appropriately named the light. It's lighter on components, fewer components, the least of the tactical delta loop and the 2.0. Therefore it's lighter cube, lighter weight, it's lighter on the wallet and it's lighter on setup time. This is the fastest of all the systems to set up. This telescoping vertical configuration is omnidirectional short to medium range. It'll provide ground wave propagation up to 90 miles, medium sky wave propagation 300 to 1500 miles, and long range, well, it's not on the chameleon chart, but we'll get a look at our whisper maps here in just a minute and we'll get an answer on that topic. Once I get that 17 foot telescoping antenna up in the air, we'll take that 60 foot antenna wire, we'll convert it over to a counterpoise. We'll wrap 25 feet of that out across the surface of the ground. And next thing you know, we've got a multi-purpose wire that we can use as an antenna or as a counterpoise. To achieve the best SWR on 30 through 17, the telescoping whip should be fully extended as I'm demonstrating here. For 15 through 10, the top three sections should be collapsed. And for six meters, only the bottom three sections are to be extended. So on top of this matching unit, that 17 foot whip will be adjusted based on the frequencies, the bands that you wanna operate on. I did say one of the reasons it's called the light is because it's light on setup time. How about one minute and 31 seconds? We're operating with a fully extended SS17 and 25 feet of radial wire. Hooking up the SA1 analyzer from Chameleon, here on 30 meters we have an okay SWR. You can operate here, maybe you wanna hit that tune button. Over to 20 meters, we're looking better. And as we go higher in the frequencies, we are looking better each step. 15 meters, that's pretty good. 12 meters, well, does it get any better? 10 meters, huge band, and it's still operational here. Many of you have been watching my videos and you've been seeing me use this Zaktek Whisper transmitter. I will have a video review in it sometime in the near future. I can't imagine that his business isn't picking up as I begin to demonstrate how this thing works and the benefit it brings us in testing antennas. I can't wait to show you an antenna test next week. And we're really going to see the impact of this when we put up that wire configuration here towards the end of the video. But let me show you the whisper maps that have resulted from this testing with this fully extended SS17. Here is the chart with all of the frequencies, or I should say the bands that we're operating on. Let's look specifically at 10 meters. Over to 12 meters, everything's looking pretty good, what we're expecting, 15 meters. Over to 17 meters, next up 20 meters, and finally 30 meters. 
Operating 30 through 17, I had the SS17 fully extended per this chart. So I completed that whisper testing to my satisfaction, and then moved on to 15 through 10. And let me tell you, conditions changed in propagation. And I had challenges for probably two to three days where the bands just weren't cooperating. It wasn't just my whisper transmitter. When I turned on my transceiver, it was getting nothing. We all know in situations like that, you can hear people, contacts are still being made, but the quantity of those contacts is definitely decreased. We love the propagation we're getting with this solar cycle, but every once in a while, it just shuts us down for several hours a day or even entire weeks. While this was happening over a period of three days and I was trying to get 15 through 10 tested, I thought to myself, I wonder if I should break out that wire configuration and give that a go. This was my first attempt at this installation. I've never seen it before. I've not heard anyone talk about it before, except the good folks over at Chameleon Antenna said, Bob, give this a try. Think tactical delta loop and those clips that go between the top of the two SS-17s. Only here we have one clip and one SS-17. Think of a sloping wire. We have a 17 foot vertical and then 60 feet of a sloping wire. That palm tree is just conveniently located that it's going to act as my antenna mast on the other end of that 60 foot wire. Let's talk about why you would want to do something like this. Attaching the wire to the SS-17 is very straightforward. If you've used the tactical delta loop, this makes all the sense in the world to you. The loop goes over top of the ball on the end of the SS-17, and then this clip just attaches to the metal. And now you have an electrically conductive wire with the SS-17, giving you a 77-foot antenna, 60 feet of strong extra light 26-gauge wire, and 17 feet from that telescoping antenna. The reasons to think about having something like this in your MPAS light kit are twofold from my perspective. There are probably many more reasons, but the first would be, remember I said I was having challenges with propagation on 15 through 10. That's on a strictly vertical antenna. So I have an opportunity to put a wire antenna, and in this case, a sloping inverted V. It gives me different characteristics of radiation, different radiation patterns off the broadside of that wire. So perhaps that will be more conducive to the propagation situation that I find myself in. So it gives me options in the kit. And your thought might be, well, Bob, we already have a 60 foot wire. So why do we need to think about something like that lightweight, strong antenna wire that converts the SS-17 into a sloping inverted V? Well, what do you do when you're out and you want to install your 60 foot wire in an inverted V without an SS-17 and you didn't bring a mast with you? You don't have a port -a mast you don't have a fiberglass mast, you don't have a God-made tree mast. What are you going to do to get that 60-foot wire up in the air when there's nothing to hang it on? Well, this is where that lightweight wire just shines. You already have a mast with your SS-17. So your telescoping antenna, which is already part of this MPAS light kit, becomes your mast and increases the antenna from a 60-foot wire to a 77-foot antenna. That's what is special about this setup and why I'm surprised I've never seen it before. And I'm really grateful that Chameleon shared the tip with me and I hope it's a useful tip to you. It's only a good tip if this actually works. So I hooked it up to the SA1 and plotted all the ham bands. I'm not even going to go band by band because I'm pretty happy with this plot. 10 meters, pretty much what I'm expecting. Let's look at 12 meters. Hey, look at that, we're down into New Zealand. 15 meters, Australia, Iceland, wow. Now we're back down into Australia and we're into Iceland. Of course, I'm into Europe here from Florida, all over Europe on 20 meters and up into Alaska. 30 meters, New Zealand, Australia, Europe. 40 meters, pretty much what I would expect to see. And I'm even getting some 80 meter propagation out of this setup through the evening. Here we are looking at all the ham bands. So now you know why I'm kind of excited about this antenna configuration. Understand that the 60 foot wire that comes with it is Chameleon's 18 gauge PTFE 
Kevlar wire. This stuff is durable and strong. So that's why I said you need something that's a little bit more lightweight to put on top of that SS17. Don't go out and buy Walmart speaker wire and try to put that on your SS17 with 60 feet of it. You're just going to bend that SS17 over and damage it. You need something lighter than this 18 gauge wire. And that's why I'm recommending this lightweight, I think I said 26 gauge wire earlier. And that will give you some incredible flexibility in this kit. So my final thoughts on the Empass light. Well, it's light on the number of components. It's light on cube. It's light on weight. It's light on setup time. And it's light on the wallet. The one thing it's not light on is performance. So I think you can tell I'm pretty impressed with it. I hope you found this useful, friend. I can't wait to show you the next one. I've got some exciting stuff for you. Dueling tactical delta loops. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.